What's up guys, it's Nate Everyday I'm Hustling. Today me and Pittsburgh are going to be talking about investing in vintage sports cars. We appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the video. We're almost at 1400 subscribers, thank you so much. And if you aren't subscribed, hit that button right below, make that thing gray, and make sure that bell is clicked. One thing that I've been doing like investment wise is I've been like really going with a lot of older cards of like surefire hall of famers. Like I was talking to you the other day about Dwayne Wade and how like, I feel like there's going to be a big jump in his stuff once he, you know, makes the hall of fame. Cause he's, he's going to be a first ballot hall of famer. So it's literally only a matter of time before he hits the hall. And, um, you know, so I picked up uh, his rookie card Been picking up some Bosch mellow, uh, like basically all the iconic guys from the 03 04 season. I'm going to get them all graded. Been picking up a ton of like older guys like Kobe. Not that he's like older, older, but older compared to like more modern stuff 80s and 90s, uh, early 2000s. I've been kind of just thinking like, okay, well, what type of players have the ability to be a top 25 to 50 player of all time, you know, in the NBA? And I've just been targeting certain players like that lately. Yeah, after you mentioned, uh, you know, Wade's cards and stuff like that, I, I immediately went to his Topps Chrome and mm -hmm. other versions. And um, that, I think that's more of the route I'm I'm going to take. I'm going to go Chrome with him, try mm -hmm. to get something raw and grade it. I'm just trying to find that good card that I think could maybe possibly get a 10 because I want something that's going to really get me a good investment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And have a good return. Like I don't want to pay, you know, say like 50 bucks and it doesn't hit the, the target. Kind of like what I did with the Tatum. Like I got rid of the Tatum essentials because his, for every dollar that every $10 goes up on his prism, his essentials maybe gets two. Yeah. Almost that type of, of situation. So, like, I want to, if I'm going to get a weight, I want to get one of the top ones, you know, because the price really isn't too bad. There, there's ones out there for, you know, raw for anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little off centered, so I won't pick them up. But I mean, like, yesterday, I, I, I totally missed sniping one. It really uh, aggravated myself. That That's more or less what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to pick up one of those. So this way it could possibly maybe be half of what LeBron's cards may be going for maybe one day. You look at his graded stuff. It, it's it's getting some money. It's definitely getting some money. I think LeBron's going to eventually pull him up like uh, Luca pulls up Trey. Like eventually, I don't believe that there can be that big of a discrepancy between LeBron and Wade. Now, granted, LeBron's going to be in that GOAT conversation with Jordan. Wade isn't, but then again like i was telling you the other day the only two shooting guards i deem to be better than dwayne wade in the history of the nba really would be mj and kobe like i don't think gonna be that disparageable of a jump between him and uh lebron's cards yeah i agree i mean he played with Shaq. he played with lebron mm -hmm. yeah i think you're right i mean from style of play to i mean you name it i mean he's He's definitely one of the guys that you put up there. Who's better than him? You know what I mean? And there's people that are just pure shooters that might be a little bit better shooting than him, but driving, facilitating success, multiple championships, you know, uh, all-star games. I mean, if you look at all of his numbers, he's definitely up there versus yeah. uh, some of these other guys. I think with him winning with Shaq and LeBron, I think that puts him up up there with with the best so i mean that's the main thing when you're looking at players that aren't playing anymore mm -hmm. where are they rank within the best are they the best or are they just like ah eh, they had an okay career and never won a championship like i think those players kind of get forgotten you know mm -hmm. what i mean like say like car malone one of the top scores in the game you know went to multiple playoffs series ran into the bulls how many times and you know look at his cards nowadays now i don't know what his rookie's going for but you know even some of the inserts that say like uh jordan has he's not getting any type of love you can buy this for a buck a piece like the medals and stuff like that you definitely got to look at the overall body of work to really understand like what cards are going to be like those cards that kind of like the, the the mickey mantles of basketball mm -hmm. where like they're, they're iconic because they are the best that's definitely something I've been looking into a little bit more. Some of the older players are definitely a little bit harder to get if you're on a budget. The Luol Cinders and, <laughs> you know, like the any of like the 61 flair, any of that stuff. So like for me, I've really just been sticking to like 
like right around junk wax time and old and newer and just trying to get players that I deem to be, you know, right in that top 25 range, you know, for their position. And um, the, it's one thing like Gary V talks about a lot is you'll, you'll never lose money on, on a hall of famer. You know what I mean? Like, God forbid, unless something crazy happens, but they're essentially like their, their careers in, in the books and, and right. you're safe, you know, betting your money there. But like, for example, like football with the way the market is right now, you know, how crazy is it that like Jared Stidham cards are more expensive than like DeAndre Hopkins cards? You know what I mean? Like, uh, and then it, it's very likely that Jared Stidham may not pan out. I'm not saying that he won't pan out, but uh, a young quarterback like that, historically over the years, they they don't always pan out. You know what I mean? So for you know every one DeAndre Hopkins, there's probably a hundred you know Jared Stidham caliber players that at some point had a higher, uh, more expensive card. So essentially, what Gary V was trying to say is when you're betting on a surefire thing, you're essentially not risking your money with like, like Jared Sidham amount of risk because with younger players, you know, and it's the same in basketball. I mean, cause Zion could, could he become the next Greg Oden? People were saying that Greg Oden was going to have a better career than KD when they came out. Now, do I think Greg Oden was a bust? I don't just because he was injured. The world probably looks at him as a bust, but I think he had the potential just like Zion has the potential to be a generational talent, you know, things happen. So it's, when you're betting on the more mature, older players, even retired players, um, the hobby hits a spike like basketball just has. Those are cards that aren't going to you know, receive that big dip later on that um, most would. Now, you yeah. might see them go down a bit just as uh, things come and go, just like with stocks, you know what I mean? Like a as a whole, like the entire economy could be up or down. You might see that a little bit with some of the older cards, but as far as like prices dropping, like when a player leaves the bubble and stuff, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff with the older stuff. So it's more of like a safer investment long term. Yeah, definitely. And the other thing, too, is look at the brand of cards you're buying, too, especially of those players, because mm -hmm. the more sought after stuff, the chrome, the tops, you know, that stuff, you're pretty safe on when you're buying it. Just make sure that the comps are right in line of everything else. And it's going to be an investment that's going to keep going up because the older stuff, the print runs are done. You know, they might come out with reprints, but those reprints aren't worth anything. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just kind of like, I almost consider them like fake cards. You know, as long as your card is legit and it's, and, you know, get it graded, it's going to go up. Like, you can buy different players' uh, cards. Maybe they're in their tops or whatever, but maybe they're just a different variation. For 20 bucks raw, and next you know, you get a grade and it's worth $199, $200. And then um, over the years... Those pop reports and stuff, that's another thing to look at. If the pop reports aren't super high, now you have a card might not be a 99 out of whatever, it, it, but it would turn into that because you have one of the only, say, 10s or 9s, and only so many is better than yours. So, mm -hmm. you know, essentially you have something pretty rare because of the condition that it gets graded in too. Hey guys, do us a favor. Before you click off this video today, make sure you go down below and check to see if you're subscribed to Nate. If you're not, make sure you take that red button and you punch it with your mouse till it becomes gray. And then you want to go and click that bell notification so you don't miss any of these show recordings because we're going to be dropping them all the time. They're going to be epic. You won't want to miss any of them. And then go down to that description and make sure you click the link that says Pittsburgh and go over there and subscribe too because we're doing really cool content on my channel as well, guys. We appreciate each and every one of you. Stay awesome.